Gold Striker at California's Great America is arguably the most intense ride from Great Coasters International. But is it their best? Find out in this review. For many years, Gold Striker was stuck in development hell. Just one year after Cedar Fair acquired the park in 2006, California's Great America announced they planned to add a new GCI wood coaster to the park. This would give the park the new headlining coaster they desperately needed. But these plans were sacked by their next door neighbors. The most concerning issue was the move of the San Francisco 49ers football team. In 2008, the team started negotiating with the city of Santa Clara to build a new stadium next to Great America that would use their parking lot. Cedar Fair filed a lawsuit against the team that was dismissed, and the park's future is very much in doubt. Cedar Fair actually tried to sell the park in 2011, but the deal fell through, and instead Cedar Fair announced they reached an agreement with the 49ers on the new stadium. With the park's future seemingly stabilized, at the time at least, the wood coaster plans were revived. Gold Striker was announced for the 2013 season. This would be the tallest, fastest, and longest wood coaster in Northern California. The name pays homage to the Gold Rush, which is where the 49ers football team's name also comes from. As a sign of their new partnership, 49er representatives were on hand for the coaster's announcement. Shortly thereafter, the park's other neighbors expressed noise concerns, both from the ride itself and the screams of guests. Gold Strike would be placed on the southeast edge of the park, and several elements would be just 200 feet or 60 meters from office buildings. To alleviate these noise concerns, the ride was partially soundproofed. The first drop received the most extreme measures. A tunnel was erected over it, and panels were placed underneath it to reflect sounds back onto the ride. Then multiple turnarounds received paneling on the sides to keep screams inside the park. But these measures were not enough. After just one month of operation, audio technicians determined the sound levels at the nearby office buildings to exceed city standards. The problem area was the drop off the first turnaround that faced the office buildings. So the park added another tunnel to dampen the sound, and the ride has been able to operate without much of a problem ever since. Gold Striker really makes its mark as you enter the park. It's the first coaster you see as you pass through the gates, and the first drop spirals around the Star Tower Observation Tower. Then you just see the dense mess of brown track. Many guests make this their first stop, and it's not uncommon to see Gold Striker with the longest line in the park. This was my home park one summer, and it routinely got hour-long waits. The queue gives some nice views of the ride because it's right below it, but just know it'll be deafeningly loud at any time a train rumbles through. If you aren't one of the first people in the park, it's best to ride this coaster towards the end of the night. Not only will the line usually quiet down a bit, but this is a fantastic night ride with the darkness and all those tunnels. The other alternative is a purchase of paid fast lane. This brings you right up to the station and you usually will board the next train. Gold Striker has assigned seating. In its early years, seating requests were not frequently honored. In my recent visits though, the park has been happy to accommodate row requests, and I think this is a back row ride in my opinion. I think the airtime is more plentiful back there, and I love how you're pulled through some of the elements. This coaster runs two Millennium Flyer trains. They have the older style soft cushioning that I prefer. It's more comfortable. Then you have the familiar seatbelt and T-bar lap bar combination. Once the ladder is lowered and checked, I would recommend holding on to it. Otherwise, it can and will lower further throughout the coaster, making it very easy to get self-stapled from the ride's forces. One of the biggest issues with Gold Striker in recent years has been roughness. The coaster ran like a dream when I was out there in the summer of 2014, but the ride had a ton of jackhammering when I returned in 2018. Fortunately, the park at GCI retrack a good chunk of the ride before the 2022 season, and this work has really paid off. The ride still has a jitter at points, which is magnified because of how intense this ride is, but the cushion seats work wonders to absorb that vibration. I had no trouble marathoning this coaster in a recent visit. Once dispatched, you have some unbanked turns leading up to the lift hill. These look innocent, but they actually offer some decent laterals. You then ascend the 108 foot or 33 meter tall lift hill. You get a nice view of the park and stadium off to your right, and all those office buildings to your left. At the top, you head into a tunnel and proceed down the first drop, and I think the enclosure enhances the drop. It conceals the bottom, so it plays tricks with your mind how long the drop will last. 
I also really like how the drop is profiled. It ultimately turns right, but the twist doesn't start until the bottom third of the drop. If you've seen what the drop on Fryzai Park Plon's El Toro looks like, Gold Striker's drop is profiled similarly. This is two advantages. First, the steep straight portion at the start gives him floater airtime if you're in the back cars. A lot of GCI drops skip the airtime. Second, because you have so much speed when you initiate the twist, you get some nice laterals. You then fly around a high speed turn around Sky Tower. This turn is very strong positive G's for a wood coaster, and they're sustained too. The turn brings you down to the ground. There's a quick turn to the left giving a great jolt of laterals, and then you fly over this speed hill. This is an excellent element with some nice sustained floater airtime. And the speed feels unreal because you're surrounded by wood supports on all sides. You then shoot into a large turnaround. There is a kink atop the hill giving those up front some decent floater. Even those in back will get a little lift here. After a quick turn, you abruptly drop back down, giving some more floater airtime for those in back. Next is another speed hill. This one is slightly banked inward so you'll get a pinch of lateral forces while also getting some more sustained floater. You then hurdle through another turnaround that leads into a double down. Those in back at two quick pops in rapid fire succession. This is currently the roughest part of the ride because the train is really jerked through it. That's followed by another speed hill. It's not as strong as the first two. It doesn't really give any airtime in the back, but it does give some weaker and moderately sustained floater up front. The next turnaround is another one that levels off at the apex, giving a good burst of air for those up front. You then twist downwards, getting another dose of laterals, and this leads into a dip downwards that gives a nice pop of air time for those in back. Next is a double up into a turnaround. Each bump will lift you out of your seat. It has okay power up front, but the pops are really weak towards the back. The train then zips around a turn full of laterals. You then sharply rise up, offering one final pop of airtime for those up front, and then you turn to the long brake run. I find it funny Gold Striker has two covered brake runs, yet this park won't even give Flight Deck or Patriot a covering on their load platforms. But anyway, this ends the 3,197 foot or 974 meter long coaster. Before giving my final score, there are a few traits I want to reflect on. First, Gold Striker's airtime on many hills but I don't think the airtime strength was quite as powerful as some other GCIs. Rides like Thunderhead have more forceful pops into the turnarounds. Gold Striker compensates though by mixing in some sustained floater you typically don't get on a GCI. Second, Gold Striker has a lot of positive Gs, not just for a GCI, but for a wood coaster in general. This ride hits 4.2 Gs, which is crazy for a traditional woody. There are several turns and valleys that will press you down into your seat. This diversified the experience and it's one of the reasons I think it's the most intense GCI. Third, this is one of the best paced wood coasters out there. The ride's max speed is 54 miles per hour or 86 kilometers per hour, but it feels way faster. The sense of speed is fantastic because you're in close proximity to supports and all those noise panels. This coaster doesn't seem to slow down and it just keeps throwing one exciting element after another at riders. So what would I rate Gold Striker? I would give this wood coaster a 9 out of 10. This is a top notch woody. The recent track work fixed this ride's only flaw and it's running smoothly once again. Gold Striker is a relentless blitz of forces. You have plenty of airtime moments combined with blistering speed, solid laterals, and sneaky good positive G's for a woody. I was breathless every time I hit the brake run. I think Railblazer is the park's best coaster but Gold Striker is not too far behind. It gives Great America an elite one-two punch. With Cedar Fair selling Great America's land and announcing the park will close in the next decade, it's fair to wonder about the future of Gold Striker. There's no arguing this coaster's popularity. Look at its lines and how it perennially hovers around the top 10 of Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards. Some wood coasters have been moved, but most of those relocations took place in the 1980s. I love this ride layout, but it may be pretty expensive to move a wood coaster as large as Gold Striker. At that point, a park may be better off just building a brand new woody. Therefore, I would recommend getting out to this park in the near future to experience this wood coaster if you haven't already. So those are my thoughts on Gold Striker at California's Great America. 
What are your thoughts on this GCI? Do you agree it's their most intense coaster? Let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.